Hey y'all, I am back with a DIY embellishment video and this time I'm going to be recreating the pebble stitch circles. This is a very simple tutorial and so I decided to kind of change it up a little bit and add some other shapes in the mix. So I'm not just going to be doing circles. I've started by choosing several uh, different double-sided papers, although not every single one is double-sided. I've pre-cut some circles uh, and I set those to the side because I did test this out, but I am just showing you the three-fourths and uh, circle. I'm showing you the heart punch and then also the cloud punch and then the one-inch circle I've already done and I set those aside. Most of these papers that I'm using right here are double-sided, but when I did the one-inch circles I and tested it out, I just used the papers that were in my like stash, just like little scraps sitting on the side of my desk. So I decided, um, and it's not that big of a deal. Like if you don't have double sided papers, it's not a huge deal. You And like I know a lot of six by six pa paper pads are not double sided. And if that's what you tend to buy, then this project will work just fine with that. And in fact, I don't, I couldn't even tell really the difference. I just like to use double sided just in case some of them work because I do fluff them up and you can see a little bit underneath. I decided I needed a few more clouds and hearts and so I punched those out really quickly and then um, I just separated the shapes and now I'm just taking these one inch size circles and I'm just adhering four of them together. Now I will say when if it does there's kind of pros and cons. When you stick them through your sewing machine um, it's the pro is that they stay together and they're much easier to feed through the sewing machine when they're like when there's a little bit of adhesive in between these layers. The bad side to that is it's a little bit harder to fluff them up because there is that adhesive. So what I would recommend is probably using like a removable adhesive so that it's not as strong. So for these smaller ones, because they were smaller and I knew it would be more difficult to fluff them up, I just decided not to um, use adhesive just to kind of see how it worked. Um, going back, I would have probably used, I think it's uh, safer to use a little bit of adhesive because you can always fluff them up and just like take the extra time to pull them apart. But, and you guys will see what I mean here in a couple of minutes. You'll see like what I mean by that. But um, because when I fed those smaller circles through my sewing machine, uh, they had a hard time staying together. And I was like, it was really kind of a tedious task doing that. So it would have been easier to feed them when they, if they were adhered. Um, and like I said, I'm just using a tiny bit of adhesive just to make it easier for me to transfer these to my sewing machine. And I'm doing mostly four layers and the clouds, I, on the clouds I think I do three. Um, yeah, I think I just do three layers for the clouds. And you can really do, you can do two layers, you can do uh, three or you can do four. For the circles in the hearts I did four. Um, I think it just gives it a little bit of extra dimension. And like I said, you guys will see the difference it makes on a page when you add this kind of like <clears throat> uniqueness and dimension. And um, you'll get to see that process here in a little bit. So I'm about to stitch them all together. And then you guys will see the final product of that as I'm kind of fluffing them up. So this is what I meant when I was saying that this is how they become dimensional is you... Um, just pull them, pull up the sides. Obviously don't pull up the back layer because you want that to be flat because it's going to go onto your page. Um, these would be perfect for cards. Probably, I don't know that they'd be good for ma like mailing them, but if you're giving a birthday card or something like that, that would be such a cute idea to use these. And then, and they're so simple, but they make a big statement. So I'm sure you guys have done this kind of thing before, and I stitch a lot of my embellishments, and you've probably seen some of that recently, but I just really had a lot of fun making these, and it was super easy. Like, I think it took anywhere from, like, 15 to 20 minutes to make all of these. Um, so now I'm going to start with my page, and I'm just going to do a super quick 8.5 by 11 page, and it actually worked out perfectly because I had missed some pictures in my Project Life album that I really wanted to add in, and they were hidden, like, underneath the other photos, and they're photos of our mine and my husband, our nephews, that came and saw Ava for the first time back in the summer, back last summer, and so... Um, I wanted to add that in my album, so I thought doing an 8.5 by 11 paper uh, page would be perfect. I'm just using the Studio Calico, I think it's Studio Calico, um, I think, stencil. I was going to try to look for the packaging, but there's no telling where that is. Um, and then I used an Avriel ink that's called Meant to Be, and it's just a pigment ink. And that's a, a good way to be controlled, like to use a sponge. It's just a Martha Stewart, like circle punch, I mean sponge, and then... Um, 
I used the ink, the pigment ink with that, and it, it makes, you don't have to worry about it, like, getting underneath the stencil when you use ink, so it's kind of a controlled mess, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm just layering my papers, and I was kind of having a hard time because I did not prepare for this layout at all. In fact, whenever I was done doing those circles and those shapes, I decided I wanted to do this like as soon as I was done doing that. And I thought to kind of give you guys a little bit of extra something so it wasn't just like the embellishment part of the video because it was so simple. I decided to show you guys the process, but the downside to that is I didn't have anything prepared. So I just, I thought the easiest way to do this would be to add scraps from the side of the desk that I used for those embellishments because they'll match perfectly. So I just am layering up some things and I just decided I really like the way that looks. So I try to keep that um, together as much as possible. I'm just going to use my stapler. One thing about using your stapler is it's going to already add dimension. And so it's good to either use like pop dots on the bottom. You can still use regular adhesive, but because the stapler like adds that little extra dimension underneath where it folds, um, you can either use like pop dots or use hot glue to make it kind of, I guess, so that it evens up with those staples, if that makes sense. Um, and plus I wanted ex some extra dimension because of the embellishments I'm going to be using. So here I'm adding in, I'm deciding, okay, I really am liking um, the way this is turning out. And so I decided to go ahead and start embellishing the page. So I'm just pulling my little embellish pre-made embellishments and just simply adding them all over. And I add a few different sh um clouds were at the top of the photo and then I added some of the dimensional circles down below and then um, I'm going to add a couple more I think I, oh, I added a heart next to the little saying that says enjoy this and then I'm just going to continue doing that and that's pretty much all that I do and then there's some final photos I add some India ink at the end and then I also um, add my title so I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial and I know it's very simple but I hope you guys try it out and let me know if you do tag me on uh, Instagram uh, have a great rest of the see where are we we went are we on Wednesday yeah we're Wednesday so have a great rest of the week